Hi, I'm Sandy McCauley, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to do a print and cut to a click and cut using Make the Cut. On the screen, I have my image that I'm going to be using. Again, I'm using an arrow just for the sake of having something that's very clear, the orientation, um, both on the screen and then when I put it on the mat to cut it out. Um, normally, you would be importing probably a raster image and performing um, the, and a pixel trace so that you would be able to cut out print and cut out that image. All right, so now then on the, uh, the settings that you want to use, under mat configuration, select 12 inches by 12 inches. And then be sure and use landscape mode for this. I haven't been able to get it work to work quite yet in portrait mode. I'm not sure. It's probably just something I'm doing wrong. But anyway, for now, select landscape uh, for the orientation. And then zoom out so that you can see the full mat. Again, you, you can go ahead and have your image ready, but don't print until you do your print setup. Um, go to File and Print Setup. And then select the printer you want to use. You can click on Properties and change the, uh, you know, things like the type of paper being used or whatever. Make sure, you know, and the quality of the print, things like that. You can go ahead and change the orientation to Landscape here. Or, if you didn't need to go in this window, you can go ahead and click on Landscape right here. But make sure you have Landscape Printing and then also um, the Landscape um, orientation for your map, both of them. Okay? Now then go to File Print Options. Mark the box called Show Paper on Mat and mark the box called Print Registration Marks. Make sure those are both selected and click on OK. And then at this point, you're going to see a green dashed line, a rectangle, and this represents the 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper that you're printing to. Now, if you have a 12 by 12 printer, of course, that would be different. You would set 12 by 12, and then the, the green lines would be extending out here. But for now, I'm just using 8.5 by 11. You can see that it's landscape here on the... Um, uh, on the screen as I'm looking at it, but then note again when I put it on the mat that it's going to be fed uh, the other direction. Um, you know, you're going to place it on the mat exactly the way you see it on this mat where this is the direction you're feeding it into the cutter. Uh, one nice kind of feature on here, um, they actually shows it as an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and it says what printer I'm using, which that's kind of cool too. Just in case you did not go to your print setup, you can just go ahead and verify that uh, that, that looks correct. All right, and so if your image happens to be outside uh, or overlapping this border, make sure and move it in so it's clearly within the boundaries, okay? And then at this point, you would just go to File, Print, and then you can select the number of copies and click on OK, and then, your, um, then you will get your printout. Okay, so now then here's my printout, and you can see the arrow, and there's, I'm going to bring it in close, there's little tiny reg marks that look like little L shapes. Um, around the four corners. Now you only need three, and there's three. There's four printed, but only three. And you don't have to worry because the software is going to actually show you which three to use. Now then, when I put the paper down on the mat, one of the things that I'm very careful about is making sure that it's aligned. Now it doesn't have to be aligned. Uh, let me bring this down so you can see where I'm aligning it. It doesn't have to be aligned perfectly with grid lines or perfectly straight on the mat in order to get the accurate print and cut. That part's not necessary. But it is important if you want it to go very quickly and easily because the straighter it is on the mat and the more uh, uh, careful you are with getting the origin aligned, then when it gets ready to jump over to each one of those marks, it's going to be so close that you're only just going to have to tweak it just a little bit to get your alignment pin uh, perfectly aligned. So the next step then is to put in your alignment pin, and it goes into this little hole right here. Now again, if you were using a Max, you would be turning on the laser. If you're using one of the original click and cuts, you would just be putting the test pin into your blade holder grip instead of the blade. You would just start with using, and the reason for that is because the test pin, it's easier to see the tip of the pen than it is to see the tip of the blade. So use the test pin for the older uh, click and cuts. Okay, so now I've got my alignment pin in, and now then the next step is to set the origin. I want to set it so that the tip of the pin is right in the very tippity tip corner of the piece of paper or my printout. So I'm going to drop my pinch wheels. I have it this direction fine. Now I just need to move it over to the left. So I'm going to go offline and just move it over just a, just a tiny bit. Now, if it's jumping too much, go ahead and set your origin, go back online, and bring down your speed to 50. And that makes it very easy to get it moved over so it's just perfectly right on that tip. Okay, and then press your origin, go online, and then increase your speed back up to what you want to use um, for, for your printing. Now then, um, over in the software, so now I'm going to go back to the software. 
So the next step is to send the image to the cut window. So we click on the scissors icon and then make sure you have the correct model selected. I'm going to be using uh, the alignment pen for this particular uh, video and so I have the groovy selected here. And this little wrench, you'll want to click on this little wrench and then uh, inside this window then you can see what the offset values are for both the groovy and for, um, for the max. The groovy is of course the one that's selected because I selected the groovy in the previous window. And the default that you'll probably see will be 15 and minus 10. And if you've never uh, done a print and cut before, then you're going to have to be tweaking these. If you have been doing successful print and cuts in Click and Cut Studio, then go over to Click and Cut Studio, go to Cut Plotting Defaults, click on Setup. Also, make sure you're, um, you've switched over to millimeters. I forgot to mention that. Go to Plotter Options, and then these grayed out numbers under the Origin Adjust, these are the same numbers, the same X and Y that you can uh, uh, plug in to make the cut. And so you'll just put you know, those numbers right here for the X and Y. Now then, there's another thing that's very important, and that's the resolution calibration. The resolution calibration is what will cause, let's say, a 10 inch by 10 inch square to actually cut a true 10 inches by 10 inches and not slightly less or slightly more. So you want to also, if you've already uh, calibrated your Click and Cut using Click and Cut Studio, then you can grab these two numbers, these two grayed out numbers right here, the X and the Y. They, you can just plug those directly into uh, Make the Cut in this window. If you haven't ever calibrated, then what you want to do is use the calibration calculator. And to do that, just click on, the, again, this little wrench right here, and then this will bring you to this window where you can input the width and height of whatever you're testing. It's recommended that you test something large. So, you know, uh, a 12 by 12 sheet of cards or, or scrap cardstock or scrap paper works great. Put in the width and the, the height of whatever you're drawing on the screen. Come over here and draw yourself or you know, create yourself a nice big square that's 10 inches by 10 inches or 11 inches by 11 inches. And then have it either draw with a test pen or cut it out and then measure it and put in the width and the height right here. And then click on Calculate. And when it does that, then it, it'll pop up some numbers and then you can, you can choose to accept them and then test it again and make sure that you, know, you have it correct. Now, as you're facing the machine, the y-axis will be the left to right um, part of your square and then the x-axis will be the front to back. So make sure you get that correct too and, you know, and, and, and test it and make sure you know, when you put in your numbers that, again, your square gets better. It gets closer to what you, uh, what you put onto the screen. Okay, so once you have those two done, um, then, well, again, you, you know, you're going to have to start with, if you've never run one, you're just going to have to use uh, the defaults for these. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you how to adjust those. All right, and then you have all your other stuff that you've done. Now, down here under Cut Type, you're going to select Print and Cut instead of WYSIWYG, and then click on Start. And then now, this is very important. The fixed length, if you want your, uh, the, the, alignment device on your Macs to go very close to where the printed marks are, then change the fixed length to whatever you use for the printing. Um, I used 8.5 by 11 for the printout, so I would change this to 11. If you happen to have a 12 by 12 cutter and you print on 12 by 12, then leave that at 12, but otherwise change that to 11 or whatever the size was for your printing. And now you're ready to click on Begin. Right here now, I'm going to click to begin, and when I click on Begin, you will see that it has then, you'll see that it's now jumped over and it is very, very close to the, um, to the mark. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm going to bring the camera forward and hopefully you can see. You know, you're not going to be able to see because it's just almost dead on, but it actually just landed right at the mark. And again, this is the point at which you would then be uh, ready to tweak it. Over here in the software, you'll notice here that this upper, um, this little light is blinking. Now, look at your arrow, and it's the top right. And sure enough, over on the printout, I can see that it's the top right that it went to. Now then, this move by, change this to the lowest value, 1 one twenty-eighth of an inch. Now, if you had put your paper on the mat crooked, and so you had a long ways to bring that, uh, your alignment device over to the mark, then you might want to make it up an eighth of an inch. But if you've been very accurate, your paper straight on the mat and you've set your origin you know, on the tippity tip corner, then you can probably just immediately come down here to the smallest increment. Then you can use these keys to move your alignment device up or down or left or right. Now then, this will not move the device up. This actually moves it down because what it does, it moves the mat. 
This is going to bring the pin or the alignment device down towards you. This will bring it up. All right. You can also use the arrow keys on your keyboard to do the exact same thing. Just press the arrow keys and it looks perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and set it and this I would just click on this button here or you can press the enter key on your keyboard either way. Okay. Now then, once I click on that, it's now jumped to the other mark. And so over here, I can see that it's now moved down to the lower one. It's positioned right there, and it needs to go over just a little bit to the right. So I'll just click on this right button over here to move over to the right. Okay, and it looks perfect. So now then I'm going to click on the set origin or set position. And now then it's jumped over. And let's come over here. And you'll see it's gone to the third mark. And again, it's just barely off, just a tiny little bit. And it looks like it needs to go just a little bit to the right and maybe down just a tiny bit. Maybe up to the left once. And that looks good. And so then I set that origin. Now then at this point, it goes on the machine. It takes the alignment pin back to the origin. And at this point, I don't need, I can leave the alignment pin in there. I don't need it anymore, or I can take it out. Either way, it's kind of your choice. I'll take it out just so you can see the blade cutting. And now then, um, and then back in the software, it comes up and it, you know, it says important, wait for the tool carriage to return. And the only reason why that might take a while is if you have a speed set really low or something, but you know, it's ready to go now. And then I click on OK. <laughs> Okay, and now then it's done, and I can lift my pinch wheels, slide the mat forward. Oops, maybe not that far. Let's bring it back a little bit so you can still see it on the camera. And then I'm going to use uh, my artist palette knife to get up underneath the paper and bring that up. And lift my paper off the mat, and there's the arrow. And I'll now lift it up. There we go. There we go, and now you can see that our arrow has turned out perfectly. As I mentioned um, earlier in the video, um, when you click on this little wrench, it shows you the, the offset values. Now the default um, that was originally put in to make the cut for the, the groovy pin was 15 and minus 10, and then over here are the max values. Again, these are going to have to be tweaked because uh, the pin isn't going to be in the exact same position a relative to the tip of the blade for each machine you know and then, like I said even so much as a half of a millimeter which is very tiny can still make a difference in the accuracy of your print and cut and same thing for the laser the laser light is not in the exact same position from one machine to the next so what you do um, and when you've done your first cut with the arrow um, here I, this is from the click and cut max um, and groovy user manual on page the top of page 38 and then there's one for the max on page 36 but they basically work the same way what I have here I've done some diagrams and the red line uh, represents the cut line and the black represents the printed line so what you want to do is look at how your arrow cut relative to the one that was printed and then if the red line is below, notice how this red line is below the print line. If it's below, then you need to lower um, the value of X. And you'll see down here, like for example, if it was one millimeter, and you'll need to get a ruler so you can measure this, or you can just start kind of guessing, but it, it's good to have a ruler. And you'll see that, uh, again, if, if the red line is below, then lower the value of X, for example, from 15.2 to 14.2, or if the default was 15 down to 14, if it was one millimeter, okay? If the red line is higher than the black line, then that means you need to increase X. Now then, if the arrow is to the left, if the red cut line is to the left of the black uh, print line, then you need to change the value. You need to make it um, a smaller negative number. So for example, I show here, it would go from minus nine down to minus eight. Okay, and then conversely, if the red cut line is to the right of the, of the black print line, then you need to make it more negative. In other words, it needs to go from minus 9 down to minus 10. So uh, use this as a guide, and then, and again, you know, after you, you make one change, do another arrow, test it again, because you might find you're closer, but still off a little bit, and then you can start to tweak it. And what I did is when I got ready to tweak my numbers, and we'll come have a look at them, um, you'll notice like minus 10.4. Well, I probably initially went from minus 10 to maybe minus 11. But then I said, oh, no, it's not that much. It's somewhere in between. So then I probably tried minus 10.5. And I went, ooh, you know, it's just 
barely off. So then I changed it to minus 10.4. So just keep playing with those numbers until you get an absolute perfect arrow and again if it's um if you know if you find that it's lined up on one side but off on the other then that tells you it's resolution that means it's not cutting the correct size so you'll need to go back and do your 10 inch square again and get that perfect but the idea is in the end you should be able to get an absolutely perfect print and cut and after you do this four or five times you're going to find that you it's just going to be second nature to do them and you'll be getting great results